All right. Hello, everybody. So um, today we are going to run a hypothesis test for a proportion. So I'm looking at one of my categorical variables, and I, I started with my other one, my asthma variable, but I couldn't find anything that that I really liked um, out in the world to, to test with it. And partly because um, as much as I've been calling it asthma, it really is talking about um, more than just asthma. It's, it's um, um, emphysema and, and um, bronchitis and, and different diseases. So I, I went to my eyewear variable. And then what I did is I said, okay, can I find a site out in Google that is talking about the percentage of folks who, who wear contact lenses or eyeglasses or, or one of these so that I can test um, to see if that value um, holds true for the population that, that these ad health folks came from. So the, the site that I found um, was talking about contact lens users, and it says um, um, that 16.7% of U.S. adults wear contact lenses. And, and so this value, if I go to my, to my slide here, this value is super, super high compared to the, the percentage that wear contact lenses in this data set. So um, I've got some choices. I, it, you know, this is a beginning intermediate, I'm sorry, this is an introductory uh, stats class. So I'm, I'm not conducting real research. I'm not doing this really. I'm just kind of, you know, trying to, trying to experiment and, and play around with these tests. And so instead of testing whether this um, particular value was enough evidence to say that it was less than 16.7%, I used this value for the both to test whether it was more. Um, and honestly, to be completely legit, I should probably put 18.7 together with 6.02, um, cause you know, both of these categories, uh, include folks that wear contact lenses. Um, but when I ran that test, the P value had 40 zeros in front of it. Um, it was super, super small P value. So, so this gives a slightly better, um, illustration of what kind of things come out with a test typically. So that's what I went with. So um, let me go ahead and look at my slide first that um, has in the first slide the source where I where I found this information that I'm working with and that that's this website over here. And then um, my table where I'm getting my information from and um, a little blurb about what I'm going to write here in my, my hypothesis. So the source above states that 16.7% of people in the U.S. wear contacts. Ad Health has 18.7% wearing both contacts and glasses. So I think that the proportion of folks who wear, wear contacts is higher than this 16.7. And I'm going to use the 18.7 as my um, testing value, my, my sample proportion. So my null hypothesis is that the proportion actually is 16.7%, and my alternative is that it's greater. Now, when I get to the actual code, the fact that it's greater has a lot of um, importance in, in how I code this. So whenever my alternative hypothesis is greater than, I use the word larger over in this parameter here for the for the code and then if it's less than i use smaller and if it's a two-sided test because my um my alternative is that it's not equal then i don't put anything here i just don't even have this parameter the default is that it's two-sided all right so i'm going to copy and paste this code over into my program and see what i get when i run it um, and just, just to, to, now that this is bigger and we can see it maybe, um, first thing is I have to import this line to import the, the function proportions test. So from stats model, stats proportion, um, import proportion Z test. So that's gotta be in there. And then, um, the command itself has one, two, three 
and then potentially four parameters. This one I already talked about. You say alternative equals, and again, it's larger if your null hypothesis, I'm sorry, your alternative hypothesis, where is it, is a greater than, like mine is. If this was, I was trying to get evidence that it's less than 0.167, then I would use smaller. And if I had not equal, I wouldn't put anything there. So since it's greater than, I'm putting alternative equals larger. This value is the value of my um, assumed um, null proportion. So I'm, I know my hypothesis that it's equal to 16.7%. Here's that 16.7% written as a decimal. These two values are what are giving Python enough information to calculate the sample proportion. So it's 956, that's the count, out of the number of observations. Um, this is not knobs or even noobs, it's um, number of observations is what this stands for. And I totaled all these counts. So out of 5,113, 956 of them um, or both contacts or, or, or glasses, that's what gave that proportion of 18.7%. So you don't put in the sample proportion, it calculates it for you. You put the count over the, the sample size in. Okay, so let me run it, let's see what I get. And it gives me an output that, that has two numbers on it. This is the Z statistic, this is the Z score. Um, so almost four standard deviations away from the mean our 18.7 is almost four standard deviations away from the mean. Um, and so that gives a super, super low p-value, 0.0001. Um, and so when I look back at my, my slide, oops, that's what I copied over and identified what was the z-score, what was the p-value, and then here's my conclusion. Since that p-value is less than 0.05, there's enough evidence at the 5% significance level to conclude that the proportion of contact lenses where is more than that 16.7. All right, I tried to keep it under five minutes, didn't quite make it, but hopefully that all made sense, and I'll see you later.